Hello, valued viewers. I hope you're all doing very well. It's late December 2023, and added in the latest patch is a whole new section of IFF in the F15E. So, scope of this video, we're going to look at setting up our transponder through here and through here. That is what we respond with when we are interrogated by another aircraft or another radar. Also, setting up our own interrogator here for when we interrogate someone else's transponder. And finally, we'll look at actually interrogating through the radar. The transponder is set through the IFF menu here. Note that there is a digit after 4. That's showing that currently there is one IFF mode enabled, and that's mode 4. So let's go through here. Here are our transponder options. We have mode 1, mode 2, mode 3, mode C, and mode 4. Mode 4, incidentally, is on this panel down here. Not sure why it gets its own panel, but it does. Let's first take some time to understand the different modes and why they would be used. First, mode 1. It's two-digit. These modes are octal. They are not decimal. So they are 0 to 7. In fact, mode 1 can be 0 to 7 here and 0 to 3 there. Mode 1 is an old military code. Rarely used nowadays. So why is it here? Well, if you had to fly over an airspace that still used mode 1, then you would still need to use it, which is why it's in modern transponders. So let's set the code. Scratch pad. Let's set 1, 3. Press M1. Currently, it's disabled. So if someone interrogated us with a mode 1, we would not reply. If we want to reply, we enable it by having the star on there. Incidentally, if we went out to our main menu now, you can see that our transponder now has mode 1 activated and mode 4 activated. Back to transponder. Mode 2, another military mode. This one is four digit octal again, and those four digits represent our unique number, sometimes our tail number. Mode 2 is used so that military controllers know which of their aircraft are where. We can turn it on again if we want, but we cannot change it in a cockpit. It's changed by the ground crew or assigned by the ground crew. You can actually do it in DCS. You can go to the mission editor, go to additional properties for this aircraft, and you can just type the code in there. Next, mode 3, used for military and civilian. We have, again, a four-digit octal code. This is known as a squawk code. Let's set that. One, two, three, four. Mode 3 turn mode 3 on. This means that we would appear now to a civilian ATC controller. But civilian controllers see many aircraft in their airspace. What if they wanted me to make myself unique to them? I can press this IP button here. If I press it temporarily, then I'm sending extra information which will allow him to highlight me on his screen. At this point, you're saying, what has this got to do with a uh, combat sim? Well, again, in the future, this may be relevant. So that's why I'm going to go through everything. Next, mode C, used for altitude information. So if I want to transmit my altitude information, I can do that there. Just to show you on the main menu, we now have modes 1, 2, 3, C and 4 all enabled. Back in. Let's turn them off. Next, we need to look at time phases. When you fly a long mission that goes through several airspaces, you will have to change your codes accordingly. You can set them to automatically change at a certain mission time, which is a really useful feature. So let's look at programs. Program. We can set up 13 different phases. Each of those phases has a time associated to it to when that phase will be automatically implemented. So let's set up phase one, for instance. At phase one, this is a bit unrealistic, but let's just do it. I want mode one activated and I want it to be on a code of two, three. I don't want mode two, but I do want mode three. So I want mode three activated on phase one and I want a code of, I don't know, that there. And I also want mode C. I want a mission time UTC at which point this phase is enabled. Uh, let's say 0, 04 hours, 55 minutes, 33 seconds there. So at that point in the mission, phase 1 becomes active. Mode 1 turns on, mode 3 turns on, mode C turns on, mode 2 turns off. And then we can go and set phase 2 for an hour later or whatever. Will we ever do that in DCS? Uh, I'm not convinced we will, but the function is there and it should be modelled 
to at least a certain degree. So I'm going to get out of program. So we've been through modes one, two, three, and C. What about mode four? Well, mode four is the most important one. It's the one that is very much modeled in DCS. It's controlled via here. Sorry about the darkness. First, we have our mode switch. It's got A, B, or out. Mode four is a 64 plus digit encrypted code that is given to us by the ground crew or inserted into the plane by the ground crew. And we don't know what that code is. It changes based on time, possibly every 24 hours, but that may change. We can have codes A and B. Why is that? Well, it's in case that we fly over time zones. Let's say we fly a long mission where we go between time zones of where the code has changed. In that case, we need to go from code A to code B. We can also have it turned off. And I can prove that to you on here. Mode 4 is now off altogether. Next, we have our interrogation status here. So when we are interrogated via mode 4, how do we, the pilot, want to be alerted? We can be alerted with an audio alert or a light alert. And that light obviously shows there. Or we can have no alert at all. Next, we have the mode 4 master switch here. This is the sensitivity that our mode 4 is going to be working out low, normal, or emergency. And I've never known any reason other than to have normal. And I'm not sure it's modeled, but it's there. Next, our crypto switch. We have a highly secretive encrypted code on this aircraft. Three modes for it. Normal, this means that when we shut the aircraft down, the code will be zeroed, deleted. If we select hold, then when we shut the aircraft down, the code will not be lost. And we have zero. So if we wanted to zero it for some reason, let's say we're having to land at a hostile air base and we don't want them to have our code, then we can zero it manually. Also, when we eject, the ejection seat will automatically zero the code. And finally, which antenna do we want to use? Upper, lower, or both, which is automatic. I doubt that will ever be modeled, but in real life, it's obviously important. And that completes the transponder setup. Let's talk about use cases if I go back into IFF here. At the moment, if you're flying in a multiplayer or a single server, you only want to worry about setting up your mode 4, which you will need to do. If you're in a hot start like this, it's all set to the correct configuration anyway. There will be certain circumstances where you may want to use other modes as well, like mode 3. We've done a couple of huge milsim battles before where there were multiple controllers and multiple air spaces on the mission. It was absolutely enormous. We had a record breaking 160 players in one mission at one point. Because there were controllers controlling separate air spaces, they asked us to program in our mode 3 ident squawks on the aircraft that could do it although it wouldn't actually affect the dcs world it would affect third party add-ons like lot 80c a popular add-on for controlling aircraft so that's a use case of why you might want the other modes okay that's the transponder now let's go on to the interrogator which is this option here We've got some letters again, and they mean something. We have two interrogators on the aircraft, AAI and EID. We can see here that AAI is currently set up to interrogate mode 4. EID is currently set up to interrogate mode 4 as well. Let's go into interrogator. Here we set what AAI and EID will interrogate when we interrogate. Currently, AAI is selected. Do we want to interrogate Mode 1, Mode 2, Mode 3, Mode 4, and if it's Mode 4, is it Mode 4A, B, or A and B? And incidentally, we can change that here. So if I move to my scratch pad, if I went Shift, B, there, then that's now doing B. Or Shift, A, B, there. I'm now interrogating Mode 4A and B. Let's just put that back to A. So we don't wreck anything. We can also interrogate modes 1, 2 and 3. They work slightly differently in that we can use them on a C mode or an N mode. If we want to change it to N, I'll go Shift, N, mode 1 is now N. C is correct, N is normal. What that means is if I were to interrogate on not mode 4 but mode 1 with that code there, with normal, if the aircraft and their transponder transmits either that code there or any code on mode one, then it will show up on my radar screen here. If I were to change it back to 
see it would only show up on my screen here if they transmitted the correct code here one three and of course I can change that code let's go one one on the scratch pad press there so that's how that works and we can do the same for mode two here I want them only to be showed if they transmit the code one two three four it should let me have there because I've got a C after it let's put it back to mode 4a because that's what's modeled in core DCS at the moment for a manual interrogation how many bars of radar sweep because of course the radar sweeps left and right and left and right how many bars do you want it to interrogate for two bars of duration or four bars of duration finally auto ID we can either interrogate manually and we do that if we are a pilot by pressing very simply coolly switch left for more than a second to interrogate AAI or if I want to use the other interrogator the EID push and hold for longer than a second coolly switch right but I can also interrogate automatically as standard it's off so it won't we can ask it to automatically interrogate any target that we have in a single target track STT or any target or any contact I should say that we have in a PDT which is where we have a primary designated track in TWIS and we'll show all this off so don't worry too much about it if we have PDT selected it will also interrogate in an STT so just to reiterate no automatic interrogation interrogation in just an STT interrogation in a PDT and an STT I personally think that you should have it set to that so we have maximum automation with the IFF system now those settings that I've done relate to the AAI what about the EID the second interrogator well just press that there and we can go and set that up exactly the same so I could have EID scan uh, modes 1 and modes 2 and not mode 4 I could have AAI scan mode 3 and mode 4 I could have EID scan it on four bars and I could have AII scan it on two bars okay back to main menu and you can see that our AAI interrogator is interrogating modes 3 and modes 4 and our EID interrogator is interrogating modes 1 and modes 2 all we need to show now is the actual interrogation and it's pretty simple in fact I've taken so long that all the aircraft have disappeared so let me reset so off we go active pause it should work with a pause on we are here here are a bunch of tankers coming towards us half of them blue half of them red first because I just restarted I need to just set our interrogator up very quickly so I'm going to have uh, AAI set to mode 4A I'm going to have full automatic STT and PDT on two bars EID set the same okay let's interrogate first with our air-to-air -air radar selected we need to make the screen soy or take control of the screen with castle switch left long press done move my uh, cursor to a target in fact I don't need to with the cursor anywhere on the screen I can press and hold for more than a second coolly switch left long to interrogate with our AAI let's show you doing that pushing and holding on the left we can see AAI it's going to I'm going to pause there it's going to show that we are interrogating in mode 4a incidentally if I had other modes selected as well like all of them then it will go through and interrogate each manually in fact I can probably just show you that for the lulls I said I would show everything so let me just finish it here right I will actually want to interrogate AAI everything make sure that's accepted yep one two three and four watch this viewers coolly left long mode 4a mode 1 n so one normal two normal three normal and that should be my lot now why does each one take so long to scan or to transmit is because I set two bars which means two bars of this guy going left to right is how long that we're actually transmitting for right sorry that was a bit of a segue let's just put that back um there right so uh back to just mode four and let's do another aai scan and what you'll see as i'm sure you all know is circles will appear where the friendlies are circle there circle there circle there and circle there and they will stay on there for a few seconds and if we need to rescan we can rescan we can also do an eid interrogation with coolie right switch long do it 
EID. Off it goes. It will give us the same result. Uh, there is a benefit of EID over AAI, at least as it's modeled at the moment, because it will also enable an NCTR, a non-cooperative target recognition, which means that if the target that we are tracking are within the parameters, uh, range of about 40 miles and uh, head on and or tail on, then as well as knowing whether they're hostile and friendly, we'll know their aircraft type in it will be reported also. But these are way out of range. Next, I need to show you the automatic interrogation, which let me just check I've got turned on, and I have. Right, so I'm going to go to Twiz for this. So I'm going to select a target. I'm going to uh, lock him and then press auto acquisition forward quickly, and we're now in a TWS mode. Again, all of this is covered in my radar tutorial. Uh, within our scope of scan, we have two of those targets, and if I were to track him, make him a PDT, primary des designated track, Give it a second, and you should see it's automatically interrogating. Now, it's kind of hard to see. There's a lot going on that screen at the moment, and the reason for that is actually I'm in active pause, which makes it a bit more difficult. But you, what you will see is the tracks that are friendly will have little circles on them. Let's unpause, see if I can make that just a little bit clearer. Can you see that one there has a circle on it? Yes. Yeah, that's because that has automatically done the IFF and it will do it until I lose the track and I've just lost the track there. Uh, and that's it, viewers. Like I said, it's kind of complex and it's taken me a while to get my head around. But let me just reiterate what we've shown today, at least. We've shown how to set our transponder up with the various modes and which you should probably use and which you wouldn't. How to set our mode 4 up, our configuration we should be in for it to work. Um, how to set our interrogator up, bearing in mind that we've got two interrogators to use, how we can set each up, and then via the radar, how we actually interrogate, which is the easy bit. You just press one button or the other button or use a automatic interrogation. Will it change from here on in? Almost certainly. It's almost certainly going to get much more complex, but that's how it is at the moment anyway. I hope that was useful and bye-bye.